Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install a hidden GPS tracker in your car for under $50. And in this video we're going to cover everything that you need as well as installing it in the car and then finally at the end we'll get to test it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right to the video. Now in front of us here we have everything we're going to need for our install today and the most important component being the Sinotrack GPS tracker that I purchased off of Amazon. This thing comes in right at $40 I believe and it's a 4G equipped GPS tracker with a couple of really interesting functions. We might not use all of them today but really cool that it gives you that option there and it's also just super budget friendly. The other cool thing about this GPS tracker is that it is a 12 volt based tracker. It doesn't actually go into the OBD port like some of the more common ones. The problem with that is if someone looks at the OBD port, they're going to see something blinking and flashing and they're just going to want to pull it out. So since we're going to be renting out our car, we don't want someone messing with the tracker and that's why we're going to go with a very sleek hidden installation. And then for the tracker, we're also going to need a SIM card so that way we can actually monitor live the position because while the GPS network is free for you know any device to use, you're going to need something equipped with data connection so that you can relay the information to your app and be able to see it on your phone. So this is a really cool budget friendly plan from Speed Talk Mobile. It's $5 a month and I think it comes with like 150 megabytes of data, but we're only going to need to use about 30 megabytes a month from this tracker. So it comes with data and text and I think minutes, but it does also have instructions. We're going to get into that later once we have to actually plug it into the tracker. But to make our installation a lot easier, you'll see that I have some pry tools, some Torx bits because we're going to be doing this on my Fiat 500 today. And then I have a power probe right here. And this is a really cool tool for doing anything on an electrical system of a car because it lets you find what the power and the grounds are really easily. And if you don't have one of these, you, you can still do this job at home, but it's gonna take you a little more time. So I'll put a link to one of these down in the description below as well as all these products. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the installation. Now on my Fiat 500 here, I wanted to hide this tracker well into the dashboard. So I decided to take it apart a little bit so I could get access to the glove box. And behind there is actually a ton of room for us to be able to zip tie this tracker. And then hopefully we'll be able to get all the wire leads that we need from there as well. And what's funny is that you could actually install this tracker over on the driver's side of the car by the OBD port because that's gonna have all the signal lines that you need for it. But I would think that that's kind of like a very basic spot to put a tracker and if someone was looking they would easily find it. So we're going to do a little bit more of a secret install over on this side of the car and that way it's going to be a lot harder for someone to find and if they did clip some of the wires that they found for it, it does still have a battery on board so it's not just going to instantly cut out the signal. It should be able to keep transmitting. Now not only is this a budget tracker but it's also very simple to install. It's only got four wires in fact. So the two right here are going to be necessary for installation. This is the power and ground which is pretty normal. You have a red and a black wire. But then over here we have a yellow and orange wire. I believe the yellow one is going to be to our accessory so that we can check and see when the car is on or off. And then the orange wire can be wired into a relay for like a fuel pump cutoff, which is really cool in case your car gets stolen and you can go ahead and just cut off the motor completely so that the thieves cannot drive it. The one thing there is that it can only be activated when the car is doing 20 kilometers an hour or lower. So it's kind of a bust if the car is being driven at high speed, for example, but when they do park it, you can cut off the fuel pump relay and that way the car is left inoperable. Now there are a couple of screws on this unit and if you go ahead and remove those you can get access to the inside where we're going to be installing our sim card very soon but before we get there let's go ahead and find where we're going to be tapping in the three wires that I want to install power ground and then the accessory line and then we'll go ahead and get to installing the sim card and testing it out on our phone. So as far as getting this thing mounted up, I think we're just gonna go ahead and put it right here behind the glove box. But then the biggest things we have to worry about are routing these wires. So my power wire, we're actually gonna have to extend. It's gonna come behind the AC panel here, underneath the steering wheel, and then to our OBD port because we have a solid 12 volt power supply down here. And this is gonna be universal for all cars. It's gonna be the same wire. It's always gonna provide battery power to that OBD port. And that way it's always gonna be charging our 
GPS tracker. Then we need an accessory wire, which I'm gonna use right here. This is the sport button and the other buttons right here underneath the radio. There is an accessory here, and we know that it comes on only when the ignition is turned on. So that is a good accessory source. And then as far as a ground, we've got a ground point in there. I'll probably just loosen one of the ground bolts and then put the wire on and then retighten it. And that's gonna be the simplest way to get a quick ground in there. So why don't I go ahead now and wire in the tracker and then we can get to testing it out. So using some splice-in connectors, we went and added our 12-volt source from the OBD port, and then we moved over to the radio where we use the accessory supply, and then right here underneath the glove box, we went and got the ground point. And now I think we are ready to test out our tracker. So what we need to do is grab our SIM card, activate it, and then install it in the unit. Moments later. So I already went and activated the SIM card. In the box here, you really just get some instructions and then this business card that has the sim card right here and we're gonna go ahead and punch it out so that we can go ahead and install it oh try not to lose it but we're gonna go ahead and install it inside of the tracker and then the instructions for the tracker tell us that we need to set it up by sending a few texts to our number so since we already activated this we do have a phone number we're gonna text it from my cell phone and then hopefully set this thing up communicate with it and then get to tracking it inside the app So basically what happens is that you're gonna get these lights starting to blink and the blue light means it's the GPS signal. Once it's gone solid, it means you have a strong GPS signal. And then the orange one is gonna be your cell phone service. And so once that's gone solid as well, you should be able to text this and you know, there's some instructions on the setup. Now I did have to remove my SIM card and then put it back in, I don't know why, but it did start working the second time I put it in. And now with my phone connected and the app installed, we can even go ahead and track it and it, shows up right here on the map located right where I'm sitting. And when I go and turn the car on, you'll see that it should start glowing a lighter color of blue. So that's pretty cool. And we'll turn the car back off again and then it'll take probably another 15 seconds to update the location. But you can see the signal, the battery life, all that. There's tons of different settings that you can play around with, like, you know, setting a geofence, different alerts and stuff. And, you know, you can get into those functions with like the added relay where you, you can do like a fuel cutoff. But I think that for me, the biggest thing is just being able to see the car's updated location and hopefully keep an eye on it while it's out on Turo Rentals. So now I've got to go ahead and fix my mess. We're going to go ahead and put the included Velcro tape onto this unit here and probably Velcro tape it in. And then for good safety, we'll add a zip tie as well. So it's going to be padded up against the dashboard and it's not going to make any rattling noise. Then we can go ahead and reinstall all the trim panels on my car and then we will be done. And so just like that, our install is all done and you can't even tell from inside the car that anything was changed or added. And that's really the neat part about this tracker is that you could still use the OBD port and the driver's not gonna be able to know that it has like basically a low jack system installed. So I'll put a link to this thing down below and there's a ton more information on it and some of the features and I'm just getting used to the app, but it looks like it's gonna be a pretty cool feature for this car to give me some peace of mind when it's out being rented on Turo. And if you wanna see more about my Turo experience, Experience as a host be sure to subscribe to the channel down below leave a like or a comment as well and as always I hope you guys have an amazing day we'll see you next time